Hello and welcome to today's quick lesson, where we're going to make an animated piece of dot art. You can probably see from my example that I've been heavily inspired by some of the gorgeous Aboriginal artwork. But you can make your dot picture in any style that you like. The common element is that we're going to make it entirely out of dots. You'll also notice that my picture is animated, and I'll show you how to do that later as well. As always with these quick lessons, we're going to follow five quick and easy to follow steps to go from blank page to finished artwork. And step number one is going to involve using Keynote to make some dotty circles. These circles will form your background, and we're going to make a variety of different ones to make it really eye-catching. Then, in step number two, we're going to bring all of these circles together to fill our whole canvas with big, colourful circles. In step number three, you're going to choose what foreground element or elements you want, and you're going to create those in the same dot style, and we'll then bring that foreground element on top of your background. And then in step number four, we're going to animate your background to make it really pop off the screen. This is when you make a piece of art that you simply couldn't make in real life, but you can do it digitally on your iPad. And then in step number five, we're going to export this as a film, as a movie, that you can then share wherever you want to. To complete our quick lesson today, all you need is an iPad with my favourite app Keynote installed. And if you've got an Apple Pencil or a Logitech Crayon or a Stylus, that would be great, especially for drawing the dots on there. So, we know what we're going to make, we know how we're going to make it, and we know what we need. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump straight into step number one when you're ready. First up, let's open Keynote, and in Keynote we'll create a new presentation. Go onto the theme browser, choose the plain white presentation, and then you're going to tap and drag a box around those text boxes, and just tap on delete. Now you've got a lovely blank slide, a blank canvas, ready to start creating. So we're going to press add on the top toolbar, and we're going to go onto the objects and shapes browser. From here, get a circle and drag that onto your page. My circle already has a black fill, but if yours doesn't, maybe take a moment now to change it to be a black circle as well. And then we're going to grab the corner dot to resize it slightly. Make sure you keep it as a circle, so keep that yellow diagonal line on the screen. And I want to make mine about 180 pixels wide. If it's too big, it will take so many thousands of dots that will be here all day. If it's too small, it won't be enough dots. So I've worked out 180 is a good sort of size to aim for. Zoom in as close as you can to your circle, and then tap your pencil or crayon on the screen to bring up the drawing tools. From here we're going to use the pen, and we're going to put the pen on the thickest setting you can. Then I'm going to choose some colours. Now for me, being inspired by that Aboriginal art, I want to choose some oranges and reds and browns. And then when you've chosen a colour, you're going to just dot 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 all the way around the outside of your circle. When you've completed one ring of dots, you can then do a second ring inside that, and a third ring, and a fourth ring, and you guessed it, as many as you need to fill that circle. Think about the colours, think about patterns of colours. This one's going to get progressively darker, and then lighter, and then progressively darker as it goes through. Think about bold colours like white, that will really help it stand out. And you're going to create your circle in a pattern full of teeny tiny dots. When you're finished, press done in the top left corner, and then zoom out to see your whole keynote slide. Your circle will be quite small in the middle, but don't worry, we can soon make it bigger. We're going to try and combine our dots to our black circle we made. So just tap in a blank space and drag a box across your artwork, and then tap on Group. From here you can then resize it, and the background circle and the dots will resize in the same proportions. Make it a bit bigger so you can see. Now it's time to make a second dotty circle. So press the plus button in the lower left hand corner, scroll up and find a blank slide, and then you're going to repeat this process again. Add, shape, circle, resize circle to around about 180 pixels. Zoom in, get your pencil, get your crayon, and start going dot 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 all the way around to fill your image. Maybe try some different colour combinations, but perhaps stick to a theme if you want your overall picture to look cohesive. And you know what? If you miss a dot, or if you do one a bit too close to another one, or if you make a mistake, it really doesn't matter. If this was perfect, if every dot was perfectly spaced, then you may as well have had a computer make it for you. Art is best when it's personal and when it's handmade, and that means there are going to be mistakes, so roll with it, it's fine. I'd like you to repeat this process now, until you've got five, six, maybe seven or eight different circles full of dots. Make each one on a new slide, and try and be creative with your patterns and your colours that you're using. Let's take a pause here for a moment or two, so you can do all of your dotty circles. And when you're ready, we'll go on to step number two together. So now we've got multiple circles, we're going to add one more blank slide. 
Again, make sure it's blank, and then we're going to press the Format button and change the slide background to be black. All the other ones have been white so far. This one will stand out really easily. And then jump back to your dotty circles. Tap on the first one, select Copy, go onto your blank page, and paste it five or six times. Go onto the second of your circles. Again, select it, press Copy, and then paste it on your background slide. Try and get five or six of each of your circles onto the background slide, and then rearrange them to fill that whole page. You should have a really nice collage now of different colours, different styles, and different circles. This is looking pretty good, but I think because all the circles are the same size, it perhaps doesn't look quite as good as it could do. So we're going to select some circles and resize them. Make some bigger, make some smaller. You're going to need to rearrange your background at this point, but I think it will look better. The last thing to notice is that the most recent circles you put on are all sitting on top of the other ones. It's kind of like you stack them up higher and higher, but we can change that to make it more interesting. Tap onto any circle, and then press the Format button in the toolbar. Then go onto the Arrange tab, and you'll see a little sliding bar that says Back and Front at different ends. Drag the dot along that bar, and that will change the order of the circles on your page. It will bring some in front of others and some behind others. So now you can start interweaving your circles to make your page look really textured as well as different sizes and shapes. Playing with the layer order on as many circles as you can will really, really show up later on when we come to the animation. So do this now and you'll thank me later. All right, time for a quick pause now while you get all your circles together, resize them and change the order. I'll be here ready when you are. It's now time to think about our foreground. Now I'm inspired by some of the Aboriginal artwork where they had animals as their imagery. And I'm going to choose a lizard to fill my page. So to do that, I'm going to make a new blank slide. Press the plus button, go across to your symbols, and I'm going to find what animals are on there. Here we go, here's the lizard that I want to use. Now you could actually draw your own freehand drawing here, or bring in a symbol from a different program or app as well. But I like using the library of stuff in Keynote just to keep it all in one place. I'm going to resize my lizard, but again, not make it too big, but bigger than my circles were earlier. Perhaps about half the page. But I'm going to make my slide background grey this time, not white or black, and you'll find out why in a second. When you've made it grey, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to use my pencil to start drawing. The difference this time is that I'm going to outline my shape roughly in white pen first. This white line will stand out against your grey background, and it will also make your picture stand out against the background you made earlier. In order for my art to kind of match that Aboriginal theme, I'm going to divide my object up into different shape sections, and I'm going to use the pen tool to fill in different parts of those sections. You can do this however you want, and your foreground may differ very much from mine, but that's okay. Everyone's art should be different. So let's speed things along a little bit here, so you can see my finished lizard character. You'll notice I've used lots of different colours again, lots of dots, and I've left some areas without any pattern in at all. That's because your background is full of colour, and so the absence of colour, the black areas on my lizard, will actually stand out and contrast quite nicely from that background. When you're done, tap and drag a box around it and group it, just like you did the circles earlier, and then you're going to press Copy. Lastly, for now, you're going to head across to your background slide. You're going to paste your object onto that slide and position it where you want, just to get an idea of how it's going to look when the project is finished later. You may want more than one foreground element, and by all means repeat this process as many times as you need until you've composed your finished picture. But it's not finished yet, it's time to start animating. Please take as long as you need here to get your foreground, objects, characters, animals, whatever it may be done. And when you're ready, we'll move on to animation together in step number four. Let's drag our foreground elements off of the page for now. When you can just see your background objects again, tap onto a circle, and on that little floating toolbar that comes up, press Animate. And on that new toolbar at the bottom, you want to press Add Action, which is right in the middle there. From here, you've got lots of different animations you can add, but for this project, we're going to use the Rotate option. Tap on there, and you'll see your little circle start spinning like a pinwheel. But we're going to change that setting slightly to make it a little bit less in your face, because this is the background after all. So press the little X in the left hand side of that toolbar, and then tap onto the Rotate button again. From here you can then customise your animation as much as you want. At the top you'll notice you've got the duration, 
and the amount of degrees turned. I'm going to swipe these all the way to the right to make it last for about a minute and to make it do one complete turn. Then we can choose clockwise or anti-clockwise and we can choose how many rotations it's going to do. Mine's going to do one rotation and I'm going to alternate between clockwise and anti-clockwise for my different circles. The last setting to change is called acceleration. Now you can have it so your circle starts off slow and gets quicker and quicker and quicker and then slows down gradually at the end. But I want mine to be a constant speed so that it can loop over and over again. I'm going to tap onto acceleration and choose none. So at this point I've now changed the animation for my circle. If I press the preview button you'll see it slowly spinning round. And I can now move on to a different circle on my page. So again tap onto a circle, tap on animate on the black toolbar, and then at the bottom you're going to add an action. On the action screen choose rotate and then press the X to come out of the action picker and go into the editing of the settings. You can press the rotate button on your screen and then you get that little control panel of options. And on that control panel I'm going to make the duration last for a whole minute, the angle go all the way up to 360 and I'm going to choose clockwise or anti-clockwise. I'm going to alternate between these as I mentioned earlier. Then set it for one rotation and make sure acceleration is on none. Come off of the shape, choose a different circle, repeat, repeat, repeat. You don't have to do every single circle on your background, I'm going to do about half of them and that will create a really interesting effect which we'll have a look at in a moment. When you're on your last shape and you're happy that you've animated all the ones you want to, you're going to look in the top right corner and choose a little list icon. This brings up a menu called Build Order and on here you'll see all the different animations that you've just added to your scene. At the moment there's a gap between each one and what that means is that when you press play the first circle will spin for a minute, then the second one will spin for a minute, then the third one will spin for a minute and your animation will last for about 10 minutes. We don't want that at all. So tap onto the very very top one in your list. At the moment that is your first animation and it's going to start when someone taps the screen. Change that to after transition and it will start automatically. Then tap onto the second one in your list and at the bottom you'll see some options. We want the second animation to start with build one. So tap on with build one and you'll notice they then join together in your list. There's no gap anymore. Tap onto the third one and again select with build one. Tap onto the fourth one and go with build one. I'm not going to repeat myself 15 times here but you get the idea. All of your animations, every single one, need to start with build one. And when you've done all of that press play in the top toolbar of Keynote and it will take you to your slide with your background animation in place. It should look really great. When you're done setting all the animation orders, you're going to bring your foreground objects back onto the page as they were before, and then you can press play in the top toolbar of Keynote. That will give you a preview of your animation with your background spinning slowly and your foreground hopefully looking great in the middle. But there's one last thing we can do to make our foreground really pop off the page. So come out of the animation and press the add button to add one more shape and we're going to choose a square. Make this square black and make it fill the entire page. I know what you're thinking, I've spent an hour making an amazing animation and now I can't see any of it. Well don't worry. With that square selected press the format paintbrush, go onto arrange and drag that slider one notch to the left. That will drop this new shape just behind your foreground. If you've got more than one foreground element Play with this until it's just between the foreground layer and your background circles. Right now you can't see your background at all, but you can see your foreground. So tap onto that square again, press the format paintbrush and this time go on to style. And on this screen you can change what's called the opacity. That's how see-through this shape is. Play with that slide until you find a balance of the foreground standing out and the background being visible. You can see on mine that I've now got that really lovely balance and when I press play I've got the animation in the background and the foreground really stands out. There's quite a few steps there to complete so pause the video again and take your time to get the animation sorted and your background layering looking really great. Alright final step now. Make any last adjustments you want to your foreground and your background so you're happy with your finished piece of art. And then you're going to press the three dots in the top corner and go down to export. From here select movie. On this screen you can change settings if you want to, but there's only one that you need to change and that is the slide range. You might remember earlier that we've got multiple slides now with different objects on in our keynote file, but only one is the actual completed animation. That's the slide you want to export. For me it's slide number nine. So I'm going to go onto slide range 
and I'm going to make sure it only exports slide 9 to slide 9. That's just that one slide. Then, when you're done, press export. Give it a moment to complete that export, and it will generate a movie file for you. On the share dialog, you're going to press save video, and that will put it in the Photos app. If we come out of Keynote and open up the Photos app now, you'll see your animation is there, ready to be shared however it needs to be shared. We can watch it here and we'll get that beautiful animation created entirely out of dot art. I don't know about you, but I think this looks great, and I really hope your one does as well. So we've done five different steps today to create our dot art picture. And don't forget, at the beginning of this, you had an empty page with nothing on it at all. We've created some circular shapes for the background and made them dotty. We've then arranged those shapes to make a really interesting textured background. Then we've created foreground elements, we've combined them together and we've animated it. And finally, you've exported it as a movie. And by now, hopefully, you've created your own dot art animation. And you know what? I would love to see it. So if you're able to, you can share it on Twitter or Instagram using the Quick Lessons hashtag. Or if you want to let me know in the comments below how you got on, I'd love to hear from you there as well. Lastly, please don't forget to give my channel a subscribe if you found this video useful. There are lots more Quick Lessons for you there, including a couple on the right of your screen now. Have fun creating, and I'll see you next time.